my name is Mats Nordlund. I'm head of uh, AI Labs here at AI Sweden. A short introduction to AI Sweden. We started in 2019 mm -hmm. uh, in February, so we've been around now for just over, oh, soon coming up on six years. Today we are around 130 different partners, as you can see here. Uh, we are part of Lindholmen Science Park, and I'm, I'm happy to uh, see uh, several colleagues here from Lindholmen Science Park, including you one, who, who you will see later. Uh, we have our partners uh, in four main sectors. Um, we have the large corporations here, we have the startup and smaller companies here, we have the public sector, and then we have the academics. Uh, we're about 130 uh, altogether, and the way we've set up AI Sweden is to leverage the strength of the partnership. So this slide here illustrates roughly how we work. So several partners can get together and find each other, find a common interest, come into AI Sweden, work together to solve the problem here, and then bring it back home and implement solutions. We've seen this happening within sectors. We've seen it happen across sectors. So we've, for example, seen the healthcare sector using some of the algorithms and results coming from the automotive. We've seen space using things coming from the health sector and so forth. So we are very quick the way we've set up to be able to transfer knowledge and results between fields. We also have an ambition to be as our unique, so a unique point with us is to be able to start very quickly. So we say that anything should be possible to start within two hours. At AI Sweden. So if a couple of partners get together and want to start a new project, this should be possible to do it in two hours. And that's because all the partners have already signed the partnership agreements and they've signed the data factory agreements and, and can get going quickly. Of course, it doesn't always happen, but the benchmark we created because you can set up an account at Google and you can get going on a Google platform within two hours. So we thought, why should we be worse? So that's sort of the, the mindset we have. And so the mindset translates back to what we call here speed of all. So it's about doing things fast and it's about doing brave things together. Challenge the status quo, not just try to improve step by step, but discover new directions. Say, is this a good way to go? Let's see, and then let's try it. And if it doesn't work, that's no big deal. We'll learn, we'll stop it, and we'll move some different directions. Turns out more, than, more often than not, it actually works. And I think that's because we have the partnership where we ask each other for help. Somebody always have a way to, to look at it that helps the other sectors to go forward. We've also looked for translation of speed and bonus into Swedish. And the best one so far is far reflect. So we can apply that. <clears throat> now, this is a little bit of a history looking at where do we come from? Well, it turns out that all of that the idea, the initial idea to set up AI Sweden came from the automotive side here in Gothenburg. So this team here was the team that decided that we need to do something to, to get strengthened ecosystem of AI in Sweden. So you can see here, these are the CEOs of Volvo Group, Altaviv, Volvo Cars, Sensex, and then Mika Damberg was the Minister for Industry at the time, plus a representative here, a Vice President of Ericsson, and also the CEO of Lynn Holman, who has always been strong supporters here of, of an enabler of setting up AI Sweden up. And the idea was to set up a unique thing in the world, which was both an AI research center, but also looked into infrastructure. How would you actually train it? And that was a really good input that we had from the automotive industry. Do it this way. Set up your own data factory and figure out how to do that. And then the other thing this team told us was don't make it into an automotive center, make it into a broadly applicable national center that includes healthcare, it can include space, banks, anything, because we can all benefit from learning across. So it was a very wise and very wide vision that they had. We moved from there to something that really works. This is what it kind of looks like today, and this is our advisory board today. And here you can see there are three automotive from Stefan, Bayern, and Mats. We'll see two of them today. But we also have this is the head of research for the European Space Agency. This is the chief of the Swedish Navy. This is the chief AI for Recorded Future. We also have Dalia Isakson, who is the director general of uh, Vidova, and not least Dr. Griffiths here, who is president of the Dakota State University, and she was one of 12 commissioners on the US National Security Commission on AI. She comes here once a year to help us out with advice and so forth. So we have a very diverse, very good, strong 
um, advisory board now that really represents the original vision of, of what, we're, what, what we were created to do. And what this meeting is going to end up with is what's our next big step? And since the automotive has always been helping us to set the direction, we're looking at automotive now to do it again. So what has been done? Here are some examples. And you have probably figured out by now that this screen is divided roughly here. So it's the same thing here as it is here. So you don't have to read everything. So yeah. basically when we turned that off, we tried all sorts of things yesterday. The only way to kill that was to hang something in front of it. But looking at this, you can see we've done and are doing a lot of projects. I'm not going to go into details, they're on the homepage. We have some talent programs, and we have had the strategic leadership of getting the AI suite and so forth going. And I am going to point out three things that have been really transformational for us, and that is the FedBird project. That really set us on a completely new direction. Of course, it came from the automotive side, and it also was a collaboration with the most important university for us. And to our big surprise, that university was the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. <coughs> We didn't anticipate that it would be one of the technical universities, but we learned quickly that the agriculture university, SLU, they really have the data. And their data is not covered by GDPR, and they really want to go somewhere. So it was an extremely good collaboration with them. What we learned there was the use of proxy data. Taking, we couldn't necessarily always use the real data from the companies or from hospitals or something else. But what we could do is we could use uh, images or data sets of birds. We could use data from uh, veterinary medicine, and we could train algorithms. We could test infrastructures using these things to learn how to do it. And then we could give the algorithms and so forth back to the automotive industry or to the um, healthcare, and they could retrain it inside their domain on their own data. So the FedBird really showed us a lot of things. Unconventional collaborations across sectors that would never meet otherwise. It showed the use of proxy data using some data instead of some other data to use proof of concept. And then you take it home. And that's sort of in the spirit of AI. So you learn how to do it here, take it home, and then you apply it to your own stuff. The Smart Honeypot is one of our latest additions here. It's also a very exciting project. We have got the direction from our board here to go into securing AI. And the idea here came up from a vulnerable group uh, from Thomas here in the front. Um, which is to use honeypots, which is a trap where you attract attackers to come in and attack your infrastructure. But we can make them smart with that large language model so that they behave much more like a human or like a, an installed uh, a real computer system or, or a, a, an infrastructure. And that enables us to keep them engaged for much longer. And this can learn the attack modes from the aggressors. And but then using some of the things we did here in federated learning, we can have these honeypots teach each other about what are the attack modes, and they can learn from each other and without sharing information about each other's networks. So that's a really breakthrough on a completely new way of, of trying to figure out what is coming at your system from other sites. And then I want to point out also the talent programs. It becomes more and more evident that the more we work with young students and young graduates, the stronger we get faster. So we've had a lot of, in, these are all the things that we've done in, in automotive. We've had summer students here in the cyber program that we sent to the US for half the summer. We've had trainee programs that we're gonna do a new one here next year. We've had um, a special summer program last year on GPT where we had a number of students within several different organizations learning how to apply language models to create efficiencies internally. We've had hackathons. And here's the final picture from the hackathon, which was edge annotation. Master's programs, mid-career programs. We've had five or six colleagues from the industry coming to us, spending six to 18 months at AI Sweden learning together, and then going back to the companies. And then we're doing work with younger talents that are not quite too university yet. And then we have our strategic leadership, which we showed is now this panel. And they pointed at and from the beginning, set up AI Sweden, edge learning and securing AI. And the first challenge we had was we did this. That was given to us from the automotive, where the automotive said, Swedish ecosystem is underperforming in terms of producing results and knowledge in, in AI. 
So these were the results in 2016. What you can see is China and the US are way up, and the number of countries are here. If you magnify these, you'll see here Japan, the UK, Sweden, and Denmark are down here. So our ecosystem in 2016 hadn't even started to turn up. So the question we asked was, how do we run faster than everybody else? And that was the challenge that we responded to. And it took 10 months from this challenge until the government came out together with the industry and said, okay, we'll invest half a billion kroner together with the Swedish big companies, which was the ones that you saw here. And that was the opening ceremony in 2019. The next big challenge that we had, which also came from the automotive side, was, as you can see here, all these pictures are from Google Street View. And what you can see here is a big problem. There are signs around saying that you can't take pictures here. What you can see here are pictures uh, which have been taken it's many times with the sign right in front of you. Here you can't take pictures of that antenna. You can't take pictures of the warehouse. All of this is geolocated where exactly they are. This bunker, for example, you can absolutely not take pictures here, but there it is. So how can we <clears throat> Collect data without collecting the data. How can we share data without sharing data? That was a challenge that we got from ourselves, from the automotive side, and we had the luck uh, of collaboration between it was HP, Volvo Cars, and that side. We got together and said, "Okay, well, let's build something." And with what we say, speed and boldness, we allowed one of our colleagues to come here and we built uh, the Edge Lab. It took us two months. And we did that because we all donated. <clears throat> if you want to go out, apply for money, do procurement and so forth, it will take you something like 12 to 18 months to get in place. But with the donation, both of the equipment and time, we really got this up fast. And today, we have a lab up here, primarily donated with equipment from all different um, suppliers. You can see many of them on the side here, uh, with a value of about 70 million SCK, which is upstairs here. We can go in and for real try things. You can do federated learning. You can do all sorts of things to, to explore. We now also starting to explore how these can be attacked and how it can be attacked during training, how you prevent the models from leaking and so forth. The secret sauce is illustrated here. We do a lot with very small resources by being able to move results across fields. So we can have something that first came from mobility, like the edge learning, federated learning initiative. Then the healthcare sector said, well, gee, this is interesting. We should be able to do this between the hospitals. They started doing it. Then came to space and said, could we do this with satellites? And it worked. And then banks came in and said, could we use this between the banks to look for, for example, anti-money laundering? And then some things come out of the banks that we could bring it back. We were competing against Germany once in the space program, and they said, we have 40 people during space, they say. And I said proudly, well, we also have 40 people active in the space. However, some of them, of course, are double counted on the mobility side or on the banks or something. But I could honestly say, yes, we have 40 people working on relevant things. So that's the way we look at it. And so the key here is the talent, the people, and the ability to learn across and quickly take something from one sector to another. And then you put it home into your own domain and then implement it back home. You can do it with students. You can do it yourself. Or you can do it by hiring people from us, which also has happened. Uh, this model has drawn a lot of attention, and here you can see some of the visitors we've had over the last two years, I think, including uh, a state visit from Netherlands who requested to come here and see how we do it. Uh, and these are always preceded by a lot of fact-finding delegations who come here and map out what we do, so they actually know what they're looking at. We've had prime ministers from Norway and Estonia here. We've had Dr. Griffiths here now with the uh, current geopolitically Challenge situation, we also have much increased interest from the defense side. What you know, what of what we do here can be useful there. So with that background, um, the focus is forward in this uh, in this uh, meeting, in this event. We are launching the automotive cluster here at AI Sweden as of today. It's a great starting point with the input from the panel, from Mauricio, and from uh, your questions. The idea and the call to action here is uh, we are going to develop a strategy for the automotive cluster here in Sweden. So maybe adding to Brian's list of um, uh, done there, small, robust, valid, trustworthy, you should maybe also have something made in Sweden on there, uh, or at least invented in Sweden. Um, but help us develop a strategy. What's the next big thing? 
create a platform to deliver that. <clears throat> then leverage the partnership. We have a unique partnership here. We have uh, large commercial vehicles here. We have consumer vehicles. We have OEMs. We have all sorts of cool things here. So Sweden is actually unique in the how broad industry we have here. Everything from aircraft, telecom, cars, obviously, trucks, buses, all the way to music, streaming services, computer gaming, IKEA, and so forth. The uniqueness of our ecosystem here, what you can learn across, and as you can see, our partnership here, which is illustrated here at the bottom, gives us a super strong competitive point if we figure out how to use that to our advantage here on the automotive side. So that is that partnership. Set up projects jointly to address interesting questions and set them up in a strategic way. Right now we have a lot of projects, as you can see before, but I think we can do more. <clears throat> I think we can have people join them and we can set them up smarter based on what we've learned. We can get complementary funding in Sweden. There are some great government support programs that enable us to do innovation faster. And then, and not least, scale, grow things by using our talent programs, bringing students, fresh graduates, and really move with that. You can see we already have a cluster here in Marisu in the lead here, so please contact Marisu to follow up now. We're going to set up all sorts of activities step by step. We form a strategy team, we have some people on that already. We have the partners, we have talents coming already from some of your companies. We have some experts in place, and we have an agile heterogeneous infrastructure just upstairs here, and also access to a lot more than what we have here through other partners like AWS, Microsoft, Google, uh, Dell, HP, and others. So the ambition to be a global leader and influencer in the selected areas, this is the strategy for automotive applications, and it's with your help we can do it. <clears throat> so with that, thank you all for coming. Looking forward to seeing you again, and being in contact with Marisu and us here at ASU. Let's, let's see what we can do. Thank you for being here.